I know English, but I can't speak fluently. I can write in English, but I can't speak. Does it sound familiar, guys? Why do so many people don't have any problems when it comes to reading, writing, listening, but when it comes to speaking, so many people struggle. And this is the question I'll be answering in today's video. Hello guys and welcome back to my YouTube channel. Today I wanted to talk to you about why you understand English but can't speak fluently. I know guys, so many people struggle with this problem and that's why I actually already have a video on my channel where I talk about the reasons why some people might understand English but have problems speaking English. First of all guys, we all have to agree that speaking is the skill that is fundamentally different from writing, listening or reading. Therefore, if you've been practicing all the other skills but not speaking, you will struggle at speaking. To give you guys an example, imagine you're an athlete, a runner, and you run like a mile. But what if one day your coach tells you, so right now you're gonna be running a marathon? Of course, the act of running is always the same, like you used to run a mile and now you have to run a marathon. But the fact that the race is already different, right, means that you'll have to train to prepare for a marathon, even though it's still running. So the same thing with speaking, even though it's still the same language even though you're still learning English if you've never practiced speaking before you will need some time to get into the groove of things to understand how to speak English. So let's start with the most obvious reason. You just don't speak enough English. I know guys, this is like the hardest thing to really understand, but you have to come to terms with the fact that probably the reason why you're not good at speaking is because you don't really spend a lot of time speaking English. And I totally hear you guys. I know that a lot of you just don't have this opportunity. You might tell me, yeah, Veronica, it's easy for you to say but what am I supposed to do? Guys, I completely understand what you mean and for example when I was still in high school or my first years in college I found English speaking clubs and this is how I made sure that I always had this English environment around myself and right now this is exactly why I decided to create my own English speaking course or my own English speaking club and we're accepting registrations for the next cohort. So if you want to join us and speak English for a whole month with me and just meet people from all over the world. Actually, in my last course, we had students from 29 countries. Guys, can you imagine? It's just like absolutely incredible. And so many of our students became friends and they still talk to each other in English, which is just mind blowing. So if you join the course, you'll get four group workshops with me. You'll also practice English in smaller groups with other students. And obviously you'll meet new friends. So you can join my English speaking club by clicking the link in the description. And I'm sure guys, if you join my English speaking club, you will be speaking a lot of English, exactly what you're looking for. And here's a quick review by one of our best students. I have been participating in the speaking club for, for three months so far. And I have already um, enrolled for the next cohort, cohort number seven. Why? Because I feel comfortable and grateful to be part of this amazing community. I found new friends and a safety space to practice my English. No matter what your level is, B1, B2, Z1 or Z2, you will find classmates that can help you to improve your skills, especially speaking skills. So make sure to grab your spot right now because the number of spots is limited. We can't accept everyone, unfortunately. And yeah, the course starts on July 3rd and I'll see you there. Reason number two why you understand English but can't speak fluently might be because you actually don't understand what speaking fluently means. Let's talk about the words fluent and fluency for a second because they've been thrown out online a lot recently. Recently. So what does it mean to be fluent? Does it mean to sound like a native speaker? In my opinion, fluency is what you think about your language skills. And it doesn't mean that you have to sound like an American or speak super fast. People who are fluent in a language are first and foremost confident when they speak this language to other people. For example, I have friends who sometimes make mistakes while speaking English and their accent is not American or is not British, so you can clearly hear which country they are from. But 
when they speak English. They're so confident. And that's why all native speakers think they are fluent. Guys, self-esteem is so important when you study a foreign language. So how can you become more fluent and change your perspective on what fluency actually means? Obviously, the first thing you can do is speak English as much as you can. But the second thing you can do is writing down all your insecurities, all your fears in a journal. This is something that I started doing a while back. And guys, it has has helped me a lot. It has made me more confident speaking English. It has shown me that my English has actually improved over the years. Once I started writing down about all of my fears in English in my journal, I realized that most of the fears are actually ungrounded and they hinder my progress. So here is a good writing prompt for you guys. Ask yourself these questions. Why am I afraid of speaking English? Does this fear help me or hinder my progress? Once you've answered all of these questions, again, ideally, it's better to do it on paper because this way you're going to be doing this kind of like self-talk, kind of like self-reflections, right? And I'm speaking from experience here because I have a lot of students who have a very high level in English, but the only thing that stops them from actually actually communicating freely in English is this fear. And once they started practicing writing, like in their journal, being very honest with themselves, like writing down everything, everything you're insecure about, they told me that, yeah, they started feeling a lot better because usually you already have all this knowledge within you. You just need a little boost to break yourself from all of those chains of insecurity. The third reason why you understand English but can't speak fluently might lie in your pronunciation. The most fascinating thing to me in any language is connected speech. Native speakers connect words all the time. And right now, I want you guys to look at this sentence and I'm gonna pronounce the sentence first as people usually pronounce it. Like, I mean, non-native speakers usually pronounce it. And the second version will be me pronouncing the sentence as a native speaker would pronounce it using connected speech. I want to help him tomorrow because I know he will appreciate it a lot. I want to help him tomorrow because I know he will appreciate it a lot. <laughs> Guys, I know, it is crazy. First of all, yes, I speak a lot faster when I pronounce this sentence as a native speaker would, but the thing that helps me speak faster is using connected speech. So let's start from the first part. I want to help him. And I said, I wanna help him. <laughs> See what I did here? I just connected all of these words together. Instead of saying, I want to help, I said, I wanna help. Instead of saying want to, you can say wanna. Instead of saying help him, I said help him. And also at the end of the sentence, I connected all four words together. So instead of saying appreciate it a lot, I said appreciate it a lot. Again, in American English, connecting all the words together is so important. So to be able to speak English faster and thus more fluently, you need to learn connected speech. And luckily on my channel, I have a whole playlist with all the videos that will help you improve your speaking skills in English, that will help you learn this connected speech in American English. And I found this funny picture online with a turtle and a rocket representing how you would sound if you use connected speech. You can make a screenshot and then practice all of these expressions because people use all of these short words a lot. For example, I just taught you guys instead of saying want to, you can say wanna, I wanna go home. Then instead of saying kind of, sort of, out of, you can say kinda, sorta, outa, like I'm out of money. You can research this table more by yourself, but I personally really like the expression I don't know because a lot of uh, non-native speakers always just say I don't no. And it sounds a little bit aggressive. If you really want to drive the point home, you can obviously say I don't know, but it's always better to say I don't know. Dunno. The next reason why you might be having problems speaking English is that you're not used to the variety of sounds and phrases 
spoken English has. When we read something in English, we usually never actually pronounce the words out loud. And usually this is because we're too lazy or, you know, we kind of know the meaning and it's enough for us. We don't really want to understand how to pronounce this word correctly, but this is not a very good approach. For example, a couple of weeks ago, I finished reading a book called Becoming Myself. And guys, even though this memoir is extremely interesting, it has so many formal words. For example, the author used such words as squirrely, lampoon, as chew. I wonder if native speakers actually know these words themselves. And I think the answer is probably no. But still, even though I know that these words are like super formal, you will only probably come across them in writing, I still try to pronounce them because I want to establish this connection in my brain between how I pronounce the word, so its pronunciation, and how it's written. So now that we've talked about sounds, let's move on to phrases that people use in spoken English. Here the situation is a little bit different, right? Because in spoken English, people often use connected speech, something we just talked about, but also native speakers love using phrasal verbs and idioms in English. So I found this really interesting table on the Cambridge University website, and it illustrates well how in spoken English people would prefer to use phrasal verbs. So instead of saying continue, we can say carry on, we can also say keep on, like keep on working or keep on doing something. Instead of saying discover, I just discovered that my friend got married, you can say I just found out that my friend got married. And in my previous video, I taught you guys a lot of great idioms that people usually use in spoken English. So if you haven't watched this video yet, make sure to click right here because it has so many great idioms that people actually use when they speak English. And the final reason why you understand English but can't speak fluently might be because you just don't interact with native speakers. Unfortunately, guys, the harsh reality is that to be able to master a language, you need to be exposed to people who have a high, like a very high level in this language, or better, who are native speakers. And I know, please hear me out right now, I know that not everyone has this opportunity to live in an English-speaking country, but I can also tell you guys that living in an English-speaking country is not a guarantee that you will learn English. I'm gonna tell you a story of one of my students. I talked to her a couple of weeks ago and she's originally from Russia, but she lives in New York right now. She has two sons and both of them speak English, but she has been struggling with English for a very long time. She told me that the main reason was that she was just too comfortable. She was comfortable speaking Russian because in such cities as New York, there are a lot of Russian communities, there are like supermarkets where you can speak Russian to people, and she was just like, yeah, my husband speaks Russian, my kids can talk to me in Russian, so it's whatever, you know, I'm just gonna keep on speaking Russian. And guys, if you're in the same situation right now, so for example, you do live in an English-speaking country, but you still struggle with English, you have to really be grateful, first of all, and you have to understand that you're lucky, like you have this amazing opportunity to get out of your comfort zone, because it's so easy, like all you need to do is just step outside and forget about your native language. And this is actually something that is happening to me right now because I live in Mexico and everybody speaks Spanish here, but I just feel so comfortable speaking English because I know that people are gonna understand me, maybe not that well, obviously, because I'm not speaking their native language, but I'm still gonna be okay. But recently I told myself, okay, Veronica, stop talking to Uber drivers in English, just use Spanish. Stop talking to people in supermarkets in English. Use Spanish. Because I used to always say, no hablo español. That's it. Like, this is how I would always, you know, show everyone that I don't speak Spanish. But right now I realized that it's time for me to stop doing that. And if you don't live in an English speaking country, you can create this environment around yourself by watching movies, by listening to podcasts, or by having classes with native speaking teachers or with teachers who have a very high level in English. Or you can also join my English speaking club because I've shared all the tips with you guys, all the tips that can help you understand English 
English better, that can help you speak English more confidently and more fluently. And I'm sure that my English speaking club will help you a lot. So again, if you want to join, make sure to click the link in the description and I'll see you there. And yeah, thank you guys so much for watching this video. Make sure to subscribe to my channel and follow me on Instagram. And I'll see you in my next video. Bye guys!